Hey everyone, James here and welcome to Shard TCG. And today we're going to be taking a look at my oldest TCG, this one right in front of us right here. And while I'm doing this, I'm actually remaking this card into a modern day Shard TCG card. So this is the Ice Beast. I've got two copies of them there, in case you're wondering what's underneath. Now, when I made these on Microsoft Paint back in the day, we're talking about 15 plus years. <laughs> the art that you can do in Microsoft Paint is a little bit more limiting to what we can do today. But I think considering how long ago it was and what we had to work with, I think I've done a pretty good job, you know, for Microsoft Paint. So it'll be fun to see at the end of the video when I show the final shard card of the new Ice Beast, how it compares to this Ice Beast right here. A couple of things about the Ice Beast that I'm changing for Shard TCG is obviously it doesn't really look like a Beast card, like not a typical Shard Beast card. So I'm changing it into a Frost Demon. That's what it's gonna be. His name is Hodeus and he's got Spellbreaker and he's got a cool little effect. So I wonder what people think. We might change him about, but really this is this video doubles up as a presentation for Richard. Hi Richard. When you're checking this out, big surprise. I went and made a Frost Demon. I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, everybody else as well. Let me know in the comment section below and we'll see if we can push this Frost Beast into Shard Reality. Now, I wanna point out that I wasn't very good at spelling when I was younger. So we've got Ice Guard without the U. We've got Lightning Guard without the U. <laughs> We've got a Gold Guard without the U, of course. And you can imagine what I've got next. We've got a Fire Guard, of course. So I did these as like fun little combos and I'm pretty sure these are influenced from, um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you had the Swamp, was it, is it Guard in that as well? I think it is, there's Swamp Battle Guard and lava battle guard if that's what they're called then these are basically influenced off that but instead of being battle guard they're an actual guard and they're armored creatures instead of like more monstrous things so that's definitely that influence there and as you can see from the format of the cards as well they are very much a Yu-Gi-Oh influence there you know, you've got like your uh, attack and defense and not really a lot of other information there. You know, there's no effects, there's nothing. Even the backs are blank. Some of them are scribbled to protect us from uh, from being able to view from behind. You know, that's to stop your opponent from seeing them because they are just, just paper cards. So let's have a look through all the other cards that we've got here. And then we're going to compare them to a few modern day shard cards. Because I think as well, I know I've already done a motivational video just recently, but this is an inspirational video. This shows that you can progress. Because you see these cards, these were made with love, but not with skill, if that makes sense. You know, I absolutely love these cards, like Dragon Sun, G Wizard, uh, the Snow Beast which uh, you could save on quite a bit of ink with the Snow Beast. He's a very white boy there. Uh, the Dark Eye, which was the most common card. Definitely seeing those Yu-Gi-Oh influences there. And uh, then we've got some spell cards. But yes, these were made with love and not skill, where I think the shard cards have a bit more skill, but still a lot of love there. There's definitely a lot of love there. Right, so we've got the Death Ball, we've got the little M there, just to say, oh, that's a magic card, by the way. And that will inflict 200 damage if you use that. There's a couple of copies of it. We've got uh, Blaster 1. <laughs> we've got FKT, which does infinite damage. So that's, that's a trap card. I think that might be the only trap card I made. And it is just uh, like a bear trap, isn't it, you know? So... Not many points for creativity, but um, but there isn't really a but to that. You know, there's just not many points for creativity. As for FKT, I can't re really remember what that stands for. The T, I'm pretty sure stands for trap. It might be like fatal killer trap. That's my only guess. 
If you've got any suggestions in the comment section below, don't be afraid to post them. I want to know what you guys think FKT stands for. Give it a go, it might be fun. Lance and Shield, which is basically a bit like uh, Sword and Shield, or is it Shield and Sword? I forget in Yu-Gi-Oh. We've got Cannon. Well, that's not that clever. <laughs> We've got Devil's Horns. And I look, I even used the spray paint for that one. Check out that effect. Whoa. Getting a bit more sophisticated. Star Sword. As you can see, the stars are behind the sword. The sword is off-center. Why? I don't know. You know, it's like... Why did I do some of these things? I wish I could go and ask. You can see other inconsistencies, like we've got this thick frame around this one, when this one has no frame at all. And why I did that, I'm not so sure. This one's even got a red frame for some reason. Why did I do that? It's lost in my memory somewhere, you know? But yes, that is Ice Cannon. So that is essentially all the uh, all the cards there anyway, but I really just love the Frost Beast, uh, the Ice Beast, sorry. And I think that's because it's the only one that has a sophisticated background as well. And it looks more unique compared to some of these other ones. Obviously that is just a typical wizard. That is just some kind of dragon. But the Ice Beast has a little bit more going for, for it. It's very Asian influenced with like that uh, snow cap background as well. I uh, quite like that. So that's really why I wanted to focus on this one today and make it a modern day card. So comparing that to shard cards, I've got a big cluster of them over here. And then I think this is going to be a big influence for a lot of people who are just starting out with TCGs. It Maybe they're not very good at art in general but look you can practice you can get better like uh, i'm gonna pick a better card uh something that isn't as dark a lot of short cards are dark uh, let's go with the giliac i like the giliac and he uh, he really pops so we've got the giliac here so that's that compared to say the snow beast right both both types of animals and things which one is clearly the the more modern day more skilled version and this is what i mean when you start off in art you do start off doing things like this you know it's you don't just become perfect overnight you have to work at it you have to learn depth and perspectives and and study animals and shapes and other artists and how those artists will exaggerate certain features in certain ways and whether that matches, whether you want to incorporate that into your style or whether you want to try something else where you exaggerate something else. Like you could do creatures with extra large eyes. Of course, things like that have been done, but it's about finding what fits you. And it may take more, more than 10 years. <laughs> you know, it takes a long time, but I'm just showing you right here right now that you if you're at a level that's closer to this than closer to this then i'm showing you that it is possible to get from this to this and i'm not saying this is amazing and this is a masterpiece but this is definitely a hell of a lot better than this <laughs> you know i'm gonna take out a few more as an example like i love impose will as well and now this car, like look at this guy's form compared to G Wizard, another human form. Now I know he's in robes and stuff, and I think that is okay for, like I say, what I had to work with at the time. But to go from this to this over a long period of time, it it really brings to light how much I've progressed as a person. So always keep your older work. Don't don't destroy it and don't hate on it because one day you can look back and see what you've done and see how you've progressed and like this this is a happy day for me you know and i'm i'm not afraid to show these cards because i'm i'm proud i'm proud of what i started with you know be happy from where from where you came from because it just shows how far you've come but yes, that is everything that I have to show you today. We'll be showing the final Frost Beast, which is now Hordeus. 
and see what everybody thinks of it and see if we will in fact make this a shard card. It was a lot of fun to draw. I try to keep them as close as possible, but still adding in those extra details that makes him a little bit more shardified than what this old version of the Ice Beast was. So yes, thank you very much for watching this video, especially if you've made it to the end. It means the world of me that you can actually watch 100% of the video. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, goodbye.